Okay, this is my failures and less successful projects of 2014. I set up a goal for myself in 2014 to do one video per week. And if you were to count my channel, you would find out I fell short. Uh, some projects simply just took longer than expected. Uh, and some, quite frankly, were failures uh, or really limited successes. So, uh, in the spirit of wrapping up this year, uh, here are all the things that didn't go so well. Okay, so this is my uh, second revision spectrometer. It basically takes uh, light spectra and uh, creates uh, a graph of the spectra. No, this actually works fine. My spectrum one is, is fine. There's a slit here created out of, uh, uh, this time, two uh, razor blades which are taped on some metalized foil. And then goes on to uh, what is a, a slide, and uh, then the camera can see the spectra. And uh, if I lift out the slide, you can see I've got a, a, a bit of... Uh, coding from a CD, uh, which is fine, it's a, a transflective uh, approach, comes in, reflects against the uh, light and goes here. Uh, but I was actually hoping to uh, not use transflective, but uh, use a transmission grading. Um, you can see on the slide of actually, through the color of the rainbow there, uh, there's actually a, a grid on the slide, and I was hoping actually to pass the light through uh, through the slide, then actually put the camera onto this side here so I could see the, uh, the spectra, but uh, for whatever reason, I was not able to successfully get that to work. So, I've got a better spectrometer, but uh, I was hoping to work away from uh, using a little cut-up piece of a DVD as the diffraction grating. Okay, this is called an air bearing, or at least it was supposed to be an air bearing. Uh, it has a, a fitting on it, which goes to an air compressor. It's made out of uh, hardwood, and then if you look closely, I have a, a rubberized baffle here with a very strategic uh, series of holes. And the idea is you uh, pump compressed air into it and uh, it should lift off and then uh, hold several hundred pounds. Uh, it's quite surprising what you can do with a properly designed air bearing. Ha, this isn't one of them. Uh, let me just insert a little video. Um, you can see it goes into a, a, a oscillation. Basically, it's marginally stable. So, uh, obviously, there must be something further on skirting that I would need to do to make this a success. Um, I did try some uh, gasking of all sorts. You can see little pieces of it left here, uh, but uh, eventually, no matter what I tried, it, it wasn't successful. Uh, anyways, it was all brought about by a comment on my open beam video. Someone said you can actually tap uh, holes into hardwood. That really intrigued me because I'm not uh, a super expert uh, metal worker, but uh, I got lots of ability to do uh, woodworking in my shop. So I tapped an air fitting into mahogany. Now, I don't think that's probably a super smart idea, but it actually worked. Uh, so the fitting worked. Uh, but the concept of building air bearing, at least the, with this approach, uh, wasn't so hot. Okay, so when I was doing some acid de-encapsulation of ICs, and yeah, that's as dangerous as it sounds, um, I needed to heat up some acid with a hot plate, but I didn't have one asked at the start of the year, so um, I made one. And this actually was kind of successful. I took uh, the cardboard from an old roll of masking tape, and I took a resistor, and then I took some uh, cement I had lying about, and actually embedded the... Uh, resistor here. I have a couple leads here. I, I put a control system onto it and then I put a very, very small uh, glass vial on top of this. And uh, uh, yeah, it actually worked. Um, it wasn't uh, creating a great amount of heat, but it was very controllable. So that was kind of a half success. I eventually just went off and bought myself a proper hot plate, which uh, yeah, that worked a lot better. Okay, and this is my last and most interesting failure, although I'm not finished with this one yet. Uh, people are asking about the radiated emissions of uh, light bulbs in terms of electromagnetic spectrum. Um, and I have a spectrum analyzer, I'll just show an insert a picture of it, and it's a really nice unit, uh, but it doesn't have a preamplifier in it, which is what you need for a near-field probing. Um, so I went off and uh, created myself a near-field probe with some uh, rigid coax, uh, but I needed a preamplifier. And uh, believe it or not, even though the spectrum analyzer is probably pushing 40 years old, uh, the amplifier that goes for it still sells for a really significant fraction of its list price. It was so well designed. Uh, in fact, actually, the model that it was designed for is still in production. And I uh, wasn't keen on spending a few hundred dollars on a RF preamplifier. So I found uh, this kit, uh, Ramsey Electronics, the broadband RF amplifier, they call it. Um, I think it's for probably boosting signals to television and such not, such not. But it has a really wide range, uh, one megahertz uh, to one gigahertz. So uh, a really broadband amplifier. And uh, the idea, of course, is the near field probe goes to one side and this goes off the spectrum analyzer. Uh, and it does work, and this amplifier is actually quite a good amplifier. Uh, the problem is if you take the near field probe off and you put a 50 ohm uh, resistor onto the input, uh, the spectrum analyzer still shows the exact same spectra. Um, 
kind of a fatal flaw in this one, at least for near field probe, uh, probing. Uh, the case is plastic. Uh, let me just inset a picture of this uh, construction. You can see that basically the uh, BNCs fly uh, unshielded uh, into the board. And basically they pick up uh, radiation that way. So I think this one's actually I'm going to get a little more work on it. I'll take my uh, metal box here I was using for Peltier cooling video and I think I'll knock off these water fittings. I'm going to perhaps put some BNCs onto it and see if I can get this thing to actually work because I still have hope that I can create a decent preamplifier for my Spectrum Analyzer. Oh well, it's been an interesting 2014. Lots of real innovative uh, balls I tore down, some interesting test equipment, some kind of nifty projects, and quite frankly some interesting failures which I'm sure will help me uh, create something more clever next year in 2015.